Hey peeps, welcome to another video. I've had to move myself slightly further back from the window because, oh my goodness, the sun is bright and I actually couldn't keep my eyes open and look at you, which would have made for a really weird video. Today I am going to be talking you through my McCall's pattern collection and uh, out of my CD tower from Ikea there are three cubby holes full of McCall's patterns and that's not including the costume patterns that I keep somewhere else so it's going to be a long one you have been warned so I have these organized sort of in a semblance of order and I'm gonna go through with you now. So the very first one I have is the 7154 that is the 1930s archive collection evening gown. I bought this with the intention of making it for a flapper party in December last year and I got the fabric as well and then I just realised that it would need to be fairly fitted at my hips. I was much bigger then than I wanted to be and I couldn't bear the thought of putting all this effort into a gown that wasn't going to fit after about three or four months so I didn't do it. I do fully intend to do it as I say I've got the fabric for it it's a beautiful emerald uh, no sorry bottle green crepe back satin and I have plans to use different sides of it for the different trim um, on the back and around the hip area I think that's going to be beautiful no idea when I'm going to make this one and I'm no idea what I'm going to make this one for but I am going to make this one because I like it Next up is my obsession with shirt dresses or dresses that look like shirt dresses. The first one is the 7081. I actually have a ready to wear dress that is very similar to this. It has built in waist ties, which is probably what I would do with this one if I made view A or B. C, I love the little collar on it and D with the sleeves. Really like that. I like the crossover of crossoverness of it it has got a side zipper which I'm never really a huge fan of but I suppose you have to with the collar the way it is so yeah I, I can wrestle my way in and out of a side zipper dress that's fine but yeah really like that one want to make that one the one I've got is kind of like this white pin tuck fabric and I yeah I really like that one so yeah definitely need to take that next up we have the 6891 it is another shirt dress I think mum actually liked this one uh, I do too I really like view D particularly with the turned up sleeves I like that a lot and the longer nature of it as well although I don't know how long that would be but as you all know I'm kind of like liking sort of the midi length dresses at the moment so yes, that's another shirt dress and it will be made very soon. Another shirt dress, this is the 7084. I really like the options that they've put into this because A and B are very cute and I like the princess lines of them. And then C and D have godets inserted into the skirt to make it much much fuller which is probably the version that I would make to be honest we all know this and I just like that they've kind of done like an overlay on C on the bust and things like that I think that's really interesting and it's a, it's nice to see different suggestions like that and I love the striped sample that they've made I think that's amazing and totally would make that or wear that one this is one of my most recent purchases if you've been watching the waffly vlogs you will have seen this it is this 7623 I re again another shirt dress I really like this one because it has a waistband I'm very much a fan of a waistband I like view C particularly again because of the fuller skirt I like what they've done with all the stripes on view C as well on the pattern envelope I probably would try I like the hanky hem but I probably would try and even that out but I very much like A, B and D as well and I think I need to start having a look at embracing some less full skirts because a lot of the really pretty quilting cottons that I've got I bought in three meter lengths thinking that I would make short skirted like Anna bodices or those kind of dresses 
and whilst I'm not going to get rid of the ones that I've made I have decided that I prefer a longer length on me and those dresses I wear with sort of knee-high boots coloured tights and a cardigan in the winter although I haven't worn them very much this winter because I can only fit into a handful of them so for me shorter skirts mean winter longer skirts mean summer and obviously we're coming into spring fingers crossed hopefully it's so bright out there today it feels like spring so yes I'm thinking I'm going to need to embrace dresses that I've got a less full a can wants to just under two meters of fabric which is perfect for the things that I've got. There are some definite options here for, for making dresses out of the quilting cottons that I've got that would work really well. So I need to experiment and see, see what that silhouette looks like on me, I think. Again, this is a fairly recent purchase. It's the 7682. Again, another shirt dress. I really liked this one because it had the waist tie on it. I like D especially, although I'm not sure I'd put the split in it. I might do. I also like C. I like the way that they've done the sleeves. I just think it's a more relaxed fit, which I think would be very comfortable to wear. And again, it doesn't necessarily have to be the high-low hem or the beetle, beetle wing hem as dad calls them. So yeah, like that one. Uh, <laughs> This one you will be familiar with. It's everyone in the sewing community is familiar with this. It's the 6696 shirt dress. Now I have two size ranges because I've made one for me, one for Big Bird. I did a sew along with this as well, which I will link up here for you. Love this. Love this so much. I do have more planned. That's you know all I'm gonna say about that one. Outer shirt dresses. This is one that was sent to me the other day by Jo. It is the 7086. It's a it very me. Fitted bodice, full skirt, waist detail. What's not to love? Definitely need to make that one. Ah, now this one is kind of you look at you look at it and you think, what 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 were you thinking? 7500. It is very roughly, but I think it could be really interesting if I don't think I would use any of those sleeve options because they're not me but I very much like view A and view D bodice I like view A skirt I do like view D skirt which you can I the, the reason I bought this one is I have been looking at a lot of high-end dresses like net uh, on Netta Porter like zip by Zimmerman and I thought that this would be something that you could tweak and play around with and with the right fabric and trim do a Zimmerman inspired dress and I do have some fabric in mind for this one so I need to get that done I think what I would probably do is steal the sleeves from another dress yeah pretty sure I'd steal the sleeves from another dress and put them on that if I put sleeves on it but yeah, very much like that one. I think this one could be really interesting. Next up, we have the 7537. I, again, really love this. In fact, I love all of the versions of this. I think D is really interesting if you had a very plain fabric and then a really pretty trim. I really like all of the different fabrics that they've put together in C and given how much big scraps that I have I think that could be really fun to play around with different colours and things to put together I think B is my favourite and they're the kind of sleeves that I would steal from this one to put on the 7500 those kind of sleeves on that dress that's what I'm thinking for that one I do I do like the ruffles but you have to be really careful with ruffles and I think I think I think I prefer the flatter waistband than the waistband on A and B. Yeah, I like it. I like it a lot. This one I love. This one I bought, oh gosh, when did I buy this one? I bought this one early last year, maybe late the year before. It's the 6740. It is a, a cupped summer dress or then C and D don't have sort of like inbuilt cups. They've just got princess seams. I think this is so pretty so so pretty if i can make this fit i particularly like the striped version that the model's wearing if i can make this fit i will be very very happy i think 
I'm not I'm not sure that I like the cupped bit because I do have such big boobs that I would have to they'd be really really pronounced I think I prefer the top parts of C and D but I do very much like the skirt options on A and B which is going to be very easy to combine I like I like C and D as well so and it's not too fabric hungry yeah it's not too fabric hungry so again that could be quite a good one for quilts and cottons for the summer that one is gonna go high up on the list I think now this one I think I've had for years and years and years. There's a whole bunch of the McCall's and the Vogue ones that I've had for well over 12 years. I discovered the McCall's site in America, I discovered the membership, I discovered the sales and there were patterns for $2.99 and I went nuts. I bought an entire box full. Then when I saw what the postage was going to be, I kind of went, oh well it's still only $2.99 a pattern and realised that I could have just gone down to the local John Lewis around the corner from me and picked up all of these patterns for about the same price but it was very exciting getting that uh, box from America I remember that I remember that was the one and only time I did it because I did look at the postage every time after that but yeah I think this is one of those and it's the McCall's 5094 it's another strappy summer dress I like the back details which you're not going to be able to see I very much like the back details on A, B and C. I think it would be easier to wear D, E and F though. And I like all the trim options that they've given you. I very much like them. I like, I do like the one that they've made, the sample in blue with all the white embroidery on it. But I think I would prefer the, again, with the cupped bit, I think it would look a bit weird on me because of the big boobs. I don't know, I might give it a go and see and can prove I'm completely wrong, but yeah, I think E is my favourite on that one. And uh, now this is one that I bought last year, it is the 7626, the dungaree dress pattern and jumpsuit. I, I really like all of these versions, I do not like the velvet that they've made the sample in, I have to say. As much as I love the Tilly and the Buttons patterns, I don't think they are drafted for my aesthetic or body shape, which is totally fine. I love everyone's versions of the Cleos. I think they're brilliant, but they would I, I would I would look like a sack because I'd have to I'd have to pick such a huge size to fit over my butt that I just, no, it just it wouldn't it wouldn't be flattering on me. It really wouldn't. So I liked these ones because there were definition at the waist but the trouser legs weren't too tight and I have I have visions of making view D with a shirt and a shirt that I'm going to show you a bit later wearing that underneath and again we can blame Lydia's channel for, for giving me those ideas but I think that looks really smart. Now where do I go that I need to look that smart? Not very many places. Does that matter? Absolutely not wear what the hell you like when you like it and as long as you feel confident it doesn't matter it doesn't matter if it's if you're overdressed just own it just enjoy it because I mean, at the end of the day we're all making all of these clothes because we enjoy wearing them at least that's my perspective so yeah dress up smart it doesn't matter if you're only coming down to the main house to sit in the sewing room and sew why not right the next one is the 7381 and i got this with love sewing magazine i wasn't overly convinced about this one and then i saw somebody had made it and i was like actually i really like that because of the because it's kind of more of an empire line than an actual natural waist that's what i think my issue is with it was but i do like the tie detail on c and d so perhaps possibly kind of like a summer dress it'd be quite nice to not have something that's really really tight at the waist all the time so it might be one to try for the summer dresses possibly possibly now this is the 7119 this is another wrap dress and the lovely Claire from Penguin and Pear gave me this she was de-stashing 
and I said I'll buy that and then she turned up at the shop one day and just gave it to me which was incredibly kind of her so thank you Claire and I know Dawn from Dueling Designs has made one of these and I loved her version of it as well particularly like B the one that they've made the sample of I do like that I think that would be me I have a thing for that hem I'm sorry dad I like it Next up we have the 6834 and I'm pretty sure the lovely Karen sent me this one and it is princess themed dress. I think you could have a lot of fun panelling this and I think the instruction, the construction will be really interesting because I, uh, I believe the pattern pieces are not, yeah the pattern, the pattern pieces kind of they, they, they go straight at the top and then they have a kick out so that you can put them in and pleat them behind. I think you could have some fun with colour placement on those. But yeah, I really like that. I really like that and I like the full skirt. And then the final one I have from this cubbyhole is a archive collection and it is the 7599. I bought this for myself. I really like both versions. I know quite a few people have struggled with the one that just ties at the shoulder to get it to fit well but mm, I very much like view A I like the sample that they've made of view A as well I think that's really pretty gotta love a gingham but right so that's the first cubby hole gone through I'll move on to the next right so the next lot we have our knit dresses and this is the 7430 I really like this I mean you can I, I really like all of these patterns. There are some that I love and there are some that I really like and there are some that I'm not 100% sure about, but they're in my collection for a reason. Like I, I had the thought process that, oh, if I did this, I would get this. So it's not gonna be any surprise to you when I say, oh, I like this one. <laughs> but I do, I like this one. I think I like all the different options that you have for paneling it. I very much like the one that they've made up as the sample. I how much fabric does this need? Ooh, ooh. I could make this with some of those chunkier knits that I have. Hmm, that's interesting. Because rather than just make the same tunic over again, need to make some of these. I like this one. Next up we have the 7349. This is a very nice dress. Again, I like the colour blocking options of it. I like the fullness of the skirt of A, which actually looks fuller in the skirt portion than it does in the drawings, which is usually the other way around. Usually the drawings make it look much fuller than it actually turns out in real life. I do, I'm not overly keen on the very high neck, but I like the raglan sleeves. I like the options that you have for colour blocking that one. Definitely need to get that one made up. Now, this one I have made is the 7319. I have made view D, which I have then added fluttery sleeves to, and I increased the width of the skirt quite considerably. I've made this twice. Once was a success, once was not. And I'm going to cannibalise that fabric for PJs because I think it would look much better as PJs. Out of all of these, I actually think C is my favourite, but the skirt, the skirt really isn't as full as they make it look in the line drawing. It's the opposite to that last dress because it does come out much more like B. Now, I think I'm going to have a go at changing that skirt to be much fuller and slightly longer because I love this dress. I do love this dress. I do find on one of them, I've actually made three, I made a short version as well, but I've donated that. I do find that the in the lining can roll out and that's my problem with my evening gown version of it, that it does that really badly and really obviously. And I do understitch it, I do all of the steps that they say and it still does that. So that's something to bear in mind. But yeah, I really like that one, funnily enough, because I've made it. Next up is one that I bought for myself. It is the 7465. I think this is a really easy dress. I think view B is my favourite. View B is something that I would like to make. View B needs just over two metres of fabric that's 150 centimetres wide. Yeah, I like that. I think that would be quite a comfy day dress. 
might give that a go. Next up we have the 7538. I bought this for myself. I very much like the cross detail at the waist. I think the version D that they've made the sample of is really really nice. Something that I could definitely see myself wearing. I actually quite like the t-shirt as well and PC. I like all of them. I need to make this. Next up we have the 7243. I have made this and I made view D. I don't think it was successful on me but I think I chose the wrong fabric for it and didn't give the pattern a chance. I was at my biggest when I made it. I picked a cream coloured ponty and yeah it did not look good it showed every lump and bump and made me look bigger than I was which is why I never actually showed it and just donated it to the local charity shop I think if I'd have picked a smarter fabric I would have liked this dress I do like it on the model so I might have to revisit that one I very much like the idea of the top as well I did like the drape around the neck that was nice next up we have the 7531 it's a very basic dress it's a learn to sew for fun pattern which is great i haven't used this one so i don't know what the instructions are going to be like i wonder if they're on a par with the indie sewing patterns i get a lot of people ask me what i would recommend for a beginner sewer to to, to use pattern wise and i do say that i i do have to say that i would tend to recommend a indie pattern that has a very detailed sew along to go with it you don't have to start your sewing career making cushions and things like that you can start with slightly more adventurous projects as long as you have got somebody there that will hold your hand the whole way through every step of the way because there are things that are going to happen that you have no idea what they are and I remember when I first started sewing I I didn't uh, I didn't understand what bias binding was not that you should start like a sewing project with bias binding but I had to make my own bias binding and I I think I'd ignored the grain line because I was like but that takes up so much fabric that's silly I'm gonna put it on the street and it worked and I made the dress and it was okay but like I didn't have anyone explaining to me why bias binding was cut on the bias because the bias, you know, the fetch stretches on the fabric. And there's so many more resources available today that will tell you how to do all these things and why. I mean, that's the most important thing is why you're doing those things because somebody can tell you to do something and you just follow it and then you have no idea why you're doing it. It's like, it's just because I was told to. So I, I like to know the reasoning behind the things that I'm having to do. But yeah, that... I actually really like the, um, sorry, patterns. <laughs> I really like the version that they've made there. I think that's really nice. Need to make that one. I'm going to say that a lot as well, aren't I? Now this one is a 7121. Definitely bought this for myself. I really like the B version, the sample that they've made. C and D have a racer back, which I'm not so keen on because I wouldn't be able to wear a bra, but... I very much like the chevroned effect that they have got with the dress. Again, the skirt is probably not as full as I would like, but I can live with that. And I think this would be a really nice sort of beachy beach dress, cover-up dress. Actually, we do get sort of warm, hot weather here, and I have a beach just across the road, so yeah, need to need to investigate that one. Now this next one. One of you lovely people recommended this pattern to me. I am wearing one now. It is the 6754 and it is awesome. It is absolutely awesome. I have made a lot of changes to it. I have lengthened the bodice. I have drafted a neckband for it. I have lengthened the sleeves. I have omitted the back seam on the skirt and the bodice what else did i do i think that's it i really like the actual top versions i have made one of b the strappy one and i'm the, mo the majority that i've made are like this i do love this i am donating all of these to small girl type creature uh the ones that i've made because i have decided that I don't like the skirt length on me. I don't think it is. Having made some longer ones and worn those and 
seen them on me i think that is a more flattering length having said that this bodice is awesome i love this bodice it is very easy to sew up it is very comfortable to wear i particularly like wearing scuba i know some people don't but i do like wearing scuba so yeah oh that's another thing that i did i omitted the center front seam as well it does come with the grain line so that you can chevron uh, your your fabrics which i do very much like and probably will do at some point but i yeah i took that out because the majority of ones that i was working with didn't need to be chevroned highly 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 recommend this pattern and it is going to be very easy to add just another skirt to it so like this one next up we have the 6713 and it is a faux wrap pattern with a drape now somebody emailed me this about this the other day asking because uh, she had lengthened the skirt portion of it and was asking where she should lengthen it from and to still retain the fullness because she didn't want to just take it up from the bottom and lose some of the fullness she wanted to lengthen short lengthen it in the middle is that right or was she shortening it she could have possibly been shortening it ignore me but anyway can you remind me in the comments with what it was that you were doing <laughs> I, I i really like this why have i not made this yet I have so many lovely patterns, I need to make them. Yeah, I like that one. I like the long sleeved, I like the drape, I like the crossover at the front, like that one. Next up is the 7186. I have a feeling I was sent this one by Karen, I think. I need to go back and look at those videos and then write everyone's name on them. That was a genius idea, whoever came up with that the other day. And again, I remember the comments, I just don't remember the names of the people who made the comments. I'm really sorry. I am terrible, but brain like a sieve. I really like this one. The, yeah, the, the, the one that the model's wearing. I like that. I've worn a couple of dresses, or I've tried a couple of dresses on with ruching over them. And whilst I always thought that that would make me look bigger, I actually think it's a very flattering feature. So yeah, view B. UV. Right, so we are into the jumpsuit section of today's video and it is the 7167. I am pretty sure that Karen sent, sent this to me. I love this. I think this is awesome. You know how much I like a jumpsuit though, so that's no surprise. As much as I like A and B, the bodice on those, the back on it is just not gonna work because i have to wear a bra so it would be c and d that i would use the bodice wise but it has princess seams little cap sleeves it has a waistband you know how much i like a waistband and awesome trousers and these trousers actually you could just make the trouser section of this and this would be again a really good substitute for the kb trousers that i make uh, on occasion. I very much like the little play suit one but I don't think I would ever wear the little play suit one. I could make it culotte length though which is I think what C is but yeah really like that one. Now again this is the 7577 pattern and this was bought with the idea of making a Zimmerman-esque inspired outfit and again as much as i love a and b i don't think my legs will ever be as wonderful as hers are not that i hate her in any way shape or form but i really like all the trim options on this again i think whilst i do really like these sleeves i don't think they're for me i would prefer them to be gathered at the cuff which is a definite option or to actually have a full-on cuff at the bottom that is also a possibility i like the back yoke with the lace in it i have some gorgeous laces that would work really well for that yeah i very much like this one and can see a few of these in my future now this one was definitely sent to me by karen it's the 7131 it is the culotte pattern or trouser pattern with elasticated waist at the back and you can do them in a variety of lengths and again i don't think i would ever do the super short ones but i do like d i like that version on her and i would obviously like the floor length version as well i will be making these next month 
because Karen had an outfit idea in mind for me with these and a bodysuit from the Simplicity pattern that she sent for me. So they're on my to make for next month list and love those. This is a recent purchase. It is the 7661 and I was inspired to give a different trouser silhouette a go. So it was A and B that I particularly bought this one for as much as I love C and D. I think the peg legs loose over the hips, more fitted to the ankle will be flattering on me. I might make it, I might taper it in more so that it's even more uh, tight to the ankle, not not tight to the ankle, but fitted to the ankle than uh, the, the version that is on the model there. But I think that will suit me. It will be an experiment, we will see. We're into skirts now, and this is another new one. It is the 7725. This is one of McCall's most recent releases. I bought this one specifically for view C, which is what the model is wearing. I think that's beautiful. I really like the fact that it has flowy movement in it, but is fitted over the hips. I think this would be really good and I'm starting to go to salsa again. I'm going to be going for the first time next week and I think this would be a great skirt to wear for that because whilst it still has some movement in it, it's not as full and Marilyn Monroe-esque as most of my skirts for when I'm being twirled. And there is a lot of twirling. I won't be flashing my knickers at the world. So that was the reason behind buying that one. Now, this is one of the super, super old ones and the ones that I bought from that very first order from America. It is the M4386. I like all of these versions. And it's, again, it's a little bit, it's still fitted over the hips, but not quite down as far as that last one that I showed you. Really like A. In fact, I like all of them. I think they're all very interesting. And I think they would all make very, very me skirts. And I don't know why I've not pulled my finger out and made this one yet, but I will. Next up is the 7054 View C. I love, I love that. I have been after a skirt that is fitted like this and then flares out that doesn't have a seam around the bottom like A does where it flares out from. And I think this is gorgeous. I actually used this pattern to make a wedding dress for the lovely Pippa last year. I used this skirt pattern and then I put a Vogue pattern on top and it came out perfectly and I really wanna make one of these for myself. I tried the muslin on, which wasn't the same size as me, but it was enough that I could get an idea of what the skirt would look like on me and I really liked it. So yeah, I need to make that one. I think this one was sent to me in error by an Amazon order and I told them and they said, eh, keep it, it's fine. It's the 6654 and it is a knit pattern for either a slightly flared skirt or a pencil skirt. That might be quite a good way to ease myself into pencil skirts to give one of these a go because it will be quick to make, it won't be too expensive and I can have a look and see if I like that silhouette. Mind you, having said that, I like the silhouette of me wearing that Vogue dress, which is a pencil skirt. So I know, I know it suits me. I need to just get over my fear and just wear it, don't I? Yes. But yeah, there's that one. Okay, so next up is the 5400. This is a new purchase. I bought this the other day because after coming home from my holiday, the bikinis that I had didn't fit me very well. And I like the idea of making my own. And I have so many scraps of scuba left from making these kinds of dresses that I thought, I have enough stuff, I can do this. And as long as it's properly lined, Hannah from Evie Le Louvre says, as long as it's properly lined, you can make your, you can make swimwear out of scuba. So, and the name makes you think you should, right? I mean, I know it's just a, it's a technicality. It's not this neoprene. It's not the same sort of stuff they make scuba diving suits out of it. Uh, yes like this one want to make uh this one but not quite so long on the torso and then the frilly bottoms because i like those and the cover-up is nice too so that one you'll notice this is kind of more the active wear side of things and that i haven't made any of these funny that next one is 7663 pretty sure i bought myself this one very much like the leggings 
very much like the leggings on this one they have got interesting seaming and panelling details on them they look high-waisted which is a must for me i do like the tops as well i'd have to wear a sports bra underneath it but then i have to wear a sports bra if i do any sorts of exercise so that's not really a surprise but i like the, i like this one next up we have this 7026 i bought this because i had a top from topshop that was basically like view a yes view a and it was in a gray i don't even know what the fabric was it was kind of it was kind of like a fleece but it had a little bit of stretch in it but it had a zip up the front it was incredibly fitted and i loved that thing and i wore it all the time i wore it to death i think that one got gracefully retired with holes in the sleeves and stuff but I, I thought this this reminded me so much of that and then I really like I like the detail that they've got on the back here I don't like the frills on that if you've got workwear why do you want frilly bits but then I suppose why do you want lace on the back of it but I do really like that and again it has a leggings pattern not I don't like this leggings one as much as the last one but more active wear now this one is the 7471 and I saw this in I think I was trawling the McCall's site and trying to look at different things not just the dress section and I very much liked it and I do like the dress view D I think that's nice but it is it's a nice fitting top and I can I can see that for some really if I made it out of a nice fabric for loungewear for the home for for when I didn't want to dress fully up. Yeah, I like that one. I like the short sleeve version as well. Like A, I think that's nice. And I like that kind of neckline. You know I like that kind of neckline. It's very forgiving on the boobs, so yes. Aha. Uh -huh. Next we have the 7289. I have made two of these so far and i have two more cut out that are sitting there looking at me wanting to be sewn i have made view b but i didn't i made it from a knit fabric and this is it says georgette chiffon burnout crepe and jersey i made this from probably too heavy a weight knit fabric to begin with i've made it from i've cut it out of i've made it in a light lightweight khaki knit and i've cut it out of two super lightweight knits for the next two that I'm going to make and I basically fold the drape section so I fold the drape section back on itself and hand stitch it all the way around so that it becomes rather than draped it becomes kind of just a, a circle all the way around I suppose I could half the pattern piece and just cut half of that out and it would be really economical fabric wise but I like the weight that the four layers of fabric give it and yeah i did i did not like the pleats that were on the back i think the pleats on the back would work brilliantly if you used one of the lightweight fabrics like the georgia georgette or chiffon but for the knit fabrics that i was using it looked awful so i have adapted this one a little bit and i really like it next up is the 6844 and i have both pattern sizes for this one i have made three versions of this view d and i very much like it i like it because it is full over the hips but it, it is fitted at the waist but i don't think it is as flattering as something that just stops on the waist on me that's my preference so i'm not a hundred percent sure if i'm ever going to make another one of these but it is a fab pattern I do enjoy making it and it is very quick to make so there's that one now this one was definitely sent to me in error by an Amazon seller and when I told them they just like yeah keep it it's fine so it's the 6802 I mm, I kind of like D because of the length of it and I do like A and I think A would be quite a cute kind of cover-up for when it's slightly warmer and you've got t-shirts and some nice joggers on and then this over the top but i hmm, i'm not a hundred percent sure about this one and as i say it was sent to me in error so i've kept it because i think i want to give it a go 
and I could be completely wrong about it but I'm not 100% sure so there's that one. Next up is the 7574. I really like this one. I got this one because of the tops more so than the dress. I don't think the dress is very me. I think it was B the longer sleeved cropped top that they've made here on the model. I think that was why I really liked that one. Although A is a very nice t-shirt pattern as well. What does it, moderate stretch knits, jersey, rib knit, interlock cotton knits. I like that, I need to give that a go. At the moment I've only made, I have made t-shirts but I've only made the Sewaholic Renfrew. So I've got some nice t-shirt patterns which I'm discovering that are kind of like added into pattern bundles like this in my stash so yeah I need to give some more of these a go because I do like that. Now we are into shirts and again we have the 7508 and this was bought because I thought you could have real fun with this one. I absolutely hate the sample that they've made there. I don't like that at all. I think the fabrics that they've chosen for that. I mean, why make samples in black anyway? We all know how horrible black is to photograph. And you've made a sample for something that you know is going to be photographed. Why? Why have you done that? But I think there's some really interesting options on this. I do like the frills and the ruffles. And I think this could be quite a fun one to have a play around with. So there's that one. Aha. Everybody's made this one. Everyone went nuts for this top last year. It's the 7542. I got this with So Now magazine and yeah, I really like it. I was asking for a kind of sort of slightly fitted cropped woven top for some of the fabrics that I have and I overlooked this one because of all the crazy crazy sleeves. I have to say I've loved all the crazy crazy sleeves that I've seen everybody make with this one. Personally, I think B is my favourite, this one, and I might give that one a go, but I like this for just the, just the short sleeve top without the crazy crazy additions to the sleeves. And I know last year was the year of the sleeve and I'm just, I don't think I'm very fashionable, I think I just make what I like, which again, I don't think that's a bad thing. I don't think if you if you're if you follow fashion and you like adopting the trends and things like that, nothing wrong with it. Nothing wrong with it at all. I think you do you and enjoy those kind of things. I like picking out bits and pieces from what is a high trend and making it my own. Quite a few of you have commented that I don't make the in tre on trend pattern because that everyone's making at the time and that is generally because I think whilst it's lovely it wouldn't look right on me and I want to make clothes that I want to wear which is kind of the point of this isn't it so yeah uh that one uh, now this one is the 6794 definitely bought this for myself I absolutely love all of the versions of this and I have uh, traced all of the versions of this out. It is quite fabric hungry. Let's see, I wanted to make D. And for 115 centimeter wide, it needs 2.3 meters of fabric. For 150 centimeter wide, it needs just over two. So it is quite fabric hungry, but I think it's lovely. And I intend to make this this year. I intended to make this last July, but I just did not have time that's why it's traced but nothing got done with it so like that one this next one i have made it's the 6563 i have made two of these so far i have another one cut out and i'm planning on cutting out two more i made view a which is what she is wearing in my personal opinion i'm not 100 percent sure that they should have made it in that fabric I mean, it has apples and cherries and butterflies and roses on it. I should love it, but I, I'm just not sure. Just not sure. I really like this top. I think this is a great woven sort of chuck on piece and feel put together. I 
do not like the way that they want you to finish the back neckline because it's a bias binding that you have to turn under and I've clipped it I have been really careful and it still puckers so I've drafted a facing for it when I say drafted a facing I have just kind of copied the shape and just done a, a facing shape pattern piece that I'm going to attempt with the next one that I make and see if I prefer that and I'm not a huge fan of facings but this because of the cowl of this it, the cowl is built into the front pattern piece there are only two pattern pieces to this and now three because I've added one so the the cowl is kind of you finish the edge of the cowl and then you turn that under and that becomes like the drape becomes a, a facing in and of itself so yeah I'm, I'm gonna I'm gonna experiment a little bit more with this one but I do highly re recommend this pattern I like it a lot now the next one is the 6604 and again I have traced this one out with the view of making it I think I traced out A and B yes A and B I wasn't sure about C and D although C kind of looks mm, I don't know but I have definitely traced out view A and B mum has made a couple of these and really likes them she's left the collar off and we need to kind of work out a way to keep it on her shoulders because she's made them with very very slippery fabrics mum knows no fear she just dived in with the silk and they do kind of slip around a bit on her shoulders but they look really nice on her and as I say I have traced this out for myself so this will be made very soon as well. Now this is an oldie this is a 4257 so I bought this one because All Saints were doing a very similar shirt called the Katerina shirt and it had the big sleeve thing at the bottom and I was just like oh I like that I really like that so I bought this pattern I've not made this pattern yet I don't like the illustrations with the the lacy bits at the bottom that's not for me but C and D I like a lot and I like I like the yoke that they've put onto the front of view B they haven't mirrored the yoke in the back which I find a bit odd but that would be easy enough to do for yourself yeah I like this one why have I not made this I need to get onto it now this is a new new purchase it is the 7724 again it is this spring summer early summer release I really like this and I think this would look really cool under that pinafore jumpsuit pattern from before especially with the ruffles in although the ruffles at the front would be a nightmare under that but yeah I, I do I really like this I think I particularly like view D I think D is my favorite I do like C as well but again bras which is why I like D and I like the big collar on D I think that's really interesting so that one will be getting made this one is the 7472 and this is a completely Jessica's fault from Jessica Lorraine she's made the tunic view F and I loved it on her and I thought oh yeah I want to make that uh, for so my style the next pattern is the Cali shirt and I don't think that one's for me and I was thinking that I could substitute this one in and make something that I'm much more likely to wear because I think this is similar but it's just more me I might make view a I do like I do like this little little one here although I am tempted to make view F and have it as a kind of if I was wearing skinny jeans and a, and a tight t-shirt have that over the top with boots yeah I like that I think this is going to be my March so my star pattern rather than the Cali shirt because as much as I love the Cali shirt it's just not me I don't think let me know what you think this is the 5479 pattern now I've spoken a few times about doing a traveling pattern bundle where I would put together all of the patterns that I'm not 100% sure about that are lovely but are just not me and have kind of wound their way into my stash and I don't think I'm ever going to use and there are a few of those I've started putting those ones aside already and then put put it up as a giveaway and whoever wins it gets the pattern bundle picks out two or three and then adds two or three from their own stash that perhaps they bought and then have reconsidered and then they put it up as a giveaway and it gets sent on that way I 
got this pattern from one of those so it's not my original idea i stumbled across somebody's blog they had the, and i won it and i took this and i took a vintage pattern and i think i put three I put three vintage vogues in and a couple of modern day patterns to add into the stash and then sent it on its way and it's been all over the place and there was a lovely kind of letter in there as well where some everybody who'd won it had written two or three lines and just kind of added to it along the way and it had been been around about 20 or 30 people I lost track of it because and I, I know I don't mean this to be horrible but some people with smaller blogs won it and the smaller the blog the less pull for the giveaway next time and so it kind of got into smaller and smaller and smaller blogs but it was it was really it was a really fun idea and I liked it and mum and I have looked into getting a big box so I could do this and the the one thing that's holding me back is the weight because it can get quite heavy and I want to open it up to everybody but I am aware that it is very expensive to post in the UK let alone abroad which is why I'm kind of wavering about whether I do this or not but I this is where I got this pattern from and I picked this one out because I just again you know how much I liked cropped things I thought that would be a really cute make and it would work really well with my wardrobe so I need to make myself one of those because it is awesome. Plus, um, in the winter, I do actually have quite a few elbow length gloves, which if you've got tight fitting coat sleeves over the top are an absolute pain because you can't get them on easily. Whereas this has very large sleeves, which I should imagine actually lets up quite a lot of wind, but it would also mean I could put my gloves on. So there's that one if you haven't noticed we're into the coat portion now this one is the 6800 i have got plans for this one it's going to be it's going to be view b of course it is i like high low hems i'm sorry dad i like high low hems uh, so yeah view b i like that there is the option to put on a detachable collar i don't think i'm going to do it with the one that i have planned i mentioned in one of my videos recently my lanzarote fabric call um, lanzarote fabric call and february sewing plans i've got some green velvet curtains that i am going to scarlet o'hara the crap out of if you get that reference you're awesome and the satin the the poly satin fruity floral lining uh, fabric that I bought from Lanzarote is going to be the lining for that and the faux fur I have at the moment is a teal now I know I can get dark green faux fur so I'm actually quite tempted to make the faux fur detachable collar as well it has a detachable hood too if I have enough velvet, yeah, why not? View B, really like that one. I'm going to be making all of the coats this year. And then the final proper, not proper, the final normal, not normal. The So <laughs> I have one more coat pattern, but I have it in both sizes. This is the 7256. You can see behind me here the actual skirt portion of this coat because I have taken the skirt off of this and added, to, added it to a Lakala jacket pattern, which I am just waiting on some lining for to finish that one. I very much like the top of this jacket as well. View A and view B. I don't want the frilly sleeved bit on view D and A, don't want that, but I do like the straight sleeve and then the big collar, I think that's lovely, I think that's really lovely. I, I like C and D, but I don't think coat wise they're for me, but yes, I have made a couple of these already. And there is one in my future, it's so nearly finished, it's tantalisingly close, but yes. I'm going to be also making this for small girl type creature out of the red, green and blue tartan wool that she got from Stain Fabrics with the lining from Minerva Crafts, so she just needs to come down for a fitting. Anytime you're ready, small girl type creature. So I have a few more patterns to show you and these are the McCall's cosplay ones, so be right back. Nearly done. So the first one is the 7306. It is a crinoline corset, French knickers, neck detail. Wow, there's a lot in here. Yeah, there is a lot in here. Oh, even a hat. I can make myself a crown. I might do that. 
I might actually do that. I think this is supposed to be inspired by the Alice in Wonderland Tim Burton movies and I think it's awesome. The reason I bought it was for the crinoline portion because I'm going to be making, and I've been threatening this for two years now, I'm going to be making a gown with some butterfly wing fabric and I wanted it to have the option of having a crinoline underneath it as well to give it a massive skirt or then have just the butterfly wings draping which would give it a very different look. I think I might attempt the corset on this one but I have another I have a couple other corset patterns in here that I'm going to show you in a second so there's that one. Then we've got the 6818 who watches Once Upon a Time who absolutely adores the Wicked Queen her her outfits oh, i love them all she ha she has I, yeah totally want to be the wicked queen i i bought this with the intention of making myself a super elaborate david bowie meets the wicked queen uh, david bowie in labyrinth meets the wicked queen from once upon a time style coat and I think that would be totally, totally awesome. I can definitely see this as a really good base pattern, but then I found another pattern, which I'm gonna show you in a second, but I like this one. Now, <laughs> this one, you may not know, but I used to be a Playboy bunny. I was a croupier at the London Park, uh, Old Park Road Casino, and I, the, the costumes were individually made for us, and it was a sackable offence to take any part of your costume off of the premises because it is one of the only trademarked uniforms in the world. I think there are only four or five that are trademarked and the Playboy Bunny costume is one of those. However, lots of people have been coming up with ways of making their own and I got the 7398 pattern. Now, this is actually fairly close to the actual Playboy Bunny costume. The the ones that I wore don't have lacing, they have a zip up at the back and the hips on this one are actually much lower than the Playboy Bunny costume that I wore but I, I've always wanted to do a cosplay, I've always wanted to do a white rabbit cosplay but then I also like all of the Playboy Bunny cosplays that are a take on Star Trek or Poison Ivy or those kind of things. I am also very much aware that I am approaching 40, uh, I'm going to be 39 this year, 40 next year. Uh, so it's kind of one of those things that should I grow old gracefully and then I say to myself no, no I should not. I want to make this thing. I want to make it because I think it's awesome. I have a history with that kind of costume and that is why I bought this Yaya Han pattern. Because I was interested to see how she'd done it for a start and I have to say it's very, like I say, it's very very close to the originals. I I haven't, if I've, I have read the instructions on this but I can't remember exactly how she puts this together so it will be interesting to see what the insides are like but for the outsides it's actually a very very good copy uh when i'm gonna make this i don't know but i want to it will be fun this is another very recent purchase it is 7732 when i heard that angela would be making mccall's patterns or patterns for mccall's there was a vote on her uh, instagram which one would we like to see first this was my choice I think that girl is so incredibly talented. I very much enjoy watching her. She was the one that inspired me to start weekly vlogging. Uh, she is much better at keeping it to sewing related things. With me you get the daily waffle but yeah it was Angela who inspired me to start daily waffling at you. Sorry there's not more sewing involved in that. But I love the coat. I, I do like the skirt, I like the waistband on the skirt a lot and I like the shirt but the coat in this one or the jacket was what I particularly bought this for and I can actually see myself wearing an everyday day to day, -to -day version of this or attempting to anyway so I'm really 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 wanting to give this one a go, I just need to find the right fabric and I think I actually might have it already in my stash. 
so that will be interesting but yeah really pleased with this one and when i bought that one i also bought the 7555 which is another yaya han corset it's an underbust corset i really liked view a which is the one that she's wearing which has the collar on it i do like view c as well view b and c i could see myself wearing those on a day-to-day -day basis actually with the shirt like she's done there and um, it may be not in a studded leather but something like that but uh, yeah this was bought with the white rabbit cosplay in mind because I thought it might be quite a good corset to start with where I don't need to worry about fitting my bust as well as my waist and my hips but we'll I mean we'll see we'll see I like this one and then finally so you know I was mentioning earlier the Wicked Queen costume and the coats and the David Bowie labyrinth inspired coats. So McCall's do an actual cosplay line. So the, the, the actual patterns in there are, are much more detailed and they have lots and lots and lots of really great descriptions of how to do all the trimming and things like that. So this is the 2088 coat pattern and it is stunning. I love view A. B, again with the sleeves and the little tail on the back. <laughs> Not so sure about view B, but the blue one is beautiful. And if I didn't put all of the draped beading on the back of this one, which they do include instructions of how to do, again, I can see myself wearing this on a day-to-day -day basis. I think they call that extra. I don't mind being extra if that's the kind of coat I get to wear. I think it's stunning, I think it's so pretty, and I want to make that, and I think a blue velvet with jewel encrusted, yeah that's not a day-to-day -day coat is it, it's an evening coat, and how many evening events do I need to go to that I have that kind of, yeah I want it, I want to make this, I want to make it so badly. That was the last one, that's it, That that is everything. I have a lot of patterns in there that I haven't made yet, that I want to, there are so many good ones. I've got to stop doing the TNTs, she says, having cut. No, I've I've cut out. Oh yeah, I suppose. There's only two. I've got out of the six projects that I've got cut out over there, only two of those brand new to me. Yeah. It's all the tracing. If somebody would come and do all the tracing for me, then the, the patterns would just be ready for me to start in yeah. That's not going to happen. Anyway, enough waffle. I really hope you have enjoyed today's video and I hope that I haven't given you too many patterns that you want to add to your own stashes and if I have I'm so sorry but you know, pattern collecting and sewing are totally different hobbies said this before say it again it's true on that note i really hope you've enjoyed this video if you have please give it a thumbs up if you haven't yet please subscribe and i'll see you again very soon bye